Wow. So you were able to talk about something other than baseball for a pretty extended amount of time. But you did say it was going to be politics-free, and locker room politics is an oh-so-real thing that I can totally relate to. But that's not the main concern about the NFL right now. Right now, Seattle Seahawks cornerback Richard Sherman has injured his Achilles tendon, and he's pretty much done for the year. He's been an advocate for Thursday night football games to not be played because four days rest is not enough time in the NFL. When a high level player like Sherman gets hurt and who's been voicing opinions, that's where problems are really going to start to arise. So the NFL is going to implode to begin with. It's just going to be faster now. My solution for this? Well, I say keep Thursday night football games. But you know what? Instead of just having it right after playing a Sunday game, why not just have it after the bye week? Plenty rested from that. I mean, sure, yeah, it's supposed to be your week off, but, you know, you, you have your week off, and then you have your, like, four or so days to practice and whatnot. Anyway, what I really want to discuss is Wednesday night's basketball game between long rivals, the Los Angeles Lakers, and my Boston Celtics! I watched that entire game Thursday night, because I was busy Wednesday. But I did watch it spoiler-free, so there's that. I had no idea what was going to happen at all. I didn't even check my phone or anything for sports. I've been fear of being found out like what was going to happen. Like I wanted to like look at this game, watch and see what was going to happen. Not be like, oh yeah, the Celtics lost this game. Whatever. They blew out the Lakers and yeah, I'll fast forward through it. Not what happened. I had no idea what was going to happen. And what I saw was Kyrie Irving could lead these Celtics to a possible championship. He could. His ball handling skills are ridiculous. Like He could fit in with the Harlem Globetrotters and look like he's been doing that for years. And even without Al Horford, uh, due to concussion-like symptoms, the Celtics were able to prevail. Aaron Baines was a big help for the Celtics. Now, 5-on-5, five five, he wasn't too good, but in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations, I mean, dude's huge. He's like seven foot prior. I mean, he makes Kyrie Irving look short. Put up career numbers for points. I was wearing 20 and led the team, and he had a great all-around game, making some great shots. And, you know, he's just a force to be reckoned with if he can, like, keep getting in the groove. Now, I do hope Horford gets back in, but in the meantime, I think he could be a very pivotal player to come in and really help this team. Lakers scored the first two points, but it was all Celtics after that for the first quarter, and it was great. But then Jason Tatum went down with an ankle injury, and the Celtics just couldn't find the rhythm. They were just, like, missing too many pieces, and... They're starting to fall apart. Uh, I mean, they, they were leading at the end of the half, but that third quarter, it was, oh my God, like the Celtics just couldn't make a shot. I was cringing on the couch. I'm like, all right, they're going to get this. It's going to be a nice 30-point game. You're going to see some great Irving highlights and whatnot, and they just couldn't make a shot. But that's a good thing because the Celtics, they're playing so low with the ceiling so high. I mean, just imagine if they finally reach that ceiling, they could probably sweep the entire playoffs. But that, of course, requires the team to be at full strength, which they sort of had trouble with throughout the first part of this season. But I guess better be injured now than come playoff time. On the Lakers side of things, their player Randall did pretty well. He had a pretty good monster dunk, and he also had a couple good nice plays. Other than that, I didn't really see anything too special with the Lakers. Now, I know you said you wanted to talk about Lonzo Ball, so I'll just be brief on what I saw with him Wednesday night. And basically what I saw was he was really lost on the court. He had like no idea where he was going. He had like one good hustle play late in the game and like one good three-point shot. But other than that, he looked so lost out there. Like I could probably go into Patterson, find a 10-year-old kid and just pick him up and be like, yo, you play with more confidence than Lonzo Ball. Well, tomorrow I'll see you Thursday.